Hello. Hello. I guess we're the early ones. Hopefully some more people will uh, remember what the passcode is after the holidays. <laughs> Still a holiday season in some areas, so probably will will not reach one hundred people as usual, but hopefully we'll have a few few dozen here. Yay, people are finding their way in now. Yay. Hello, hello, happy new year, everyone. Lots of happy new years in the chat. Happy new year. Give people a couple more minutes to uh, find their way here. I can't be the only one who remembered. I know the passcode is sevens, but I can't remember how many sevens. <laughs> I have sevens. You, you like just keep banging it in until it works. <laughs> yeah. Jim, that was my approach. <laughs> I started with five, so I was lucky, but I was thinking it's either five, maybe seven, something like that. <laughs> seven sevens, five sevens, six sevens. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I don't see the participant number creeping up at the moment. How are we doing for quorum? We're not there yet, but we also don't have anything that requires it this morning. So. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, it, okay. it's all good. All right, so why don't we gently get started? Thank you everyone for joining us today. Usual rules apply. You all made it into the meeting <laughs> and uh, I'm sure Amy will update with the people who are present and I think today it's all about updates from the SIGs and uh, hopefully kicking off another amazing and productive year for the CNCF. Uh, so do we have someone here from Contributor Strategy? Paris is definitely here. I, I think we might have put Paris in the spot, though. We can always circle back if it's, uh, you know, sudden. Um, I'm going to do a quick look through the, the uh, chat as well. I didn't see anyone um, updating from app delivery. I think they're still on vacation. But um, if you're here and you wanted to be able to do an update, that's perfectly fine, too. Uh, 
I'm here. Hold on one second. I'm having an issue. Hold on. No worries. Do you want us to come back to you? We can move on to whoever's next. Yeah, that would be awesome. I'm Let's do awesome. that. All right. Uh, Sig Network. I can see Lee's on the call. Are you good to go? Hello. Good morning. Um, I think so. As good as it's going to get. <laughs> um, uh, wow. My goodness. Um, let me collect my thoughts. It's a new year. You'd think I'd be refreshed. Uh, uh, there are, I'm heavier, that's for sure. So just, just so everyone knows that, that watch out for the Christmas cookies, they'll get you. Um, two, two items, three items. One is that we are in need of, I think we need to find a, um, a, a meeting time that's a little bit earlier in the day for a few of the participants. There's been, uh, we had some good participation the last couple of meetings that we've had. Um, a broad variety of topics. There's uh, networking is a big old vast space. One of the working or the only sort of sub working group that we have at the moment is the service mesh working group. Um, an update from, so, so there's a few threads of efforts that are going on inside that working group. And those are the bullet points on the left-hand side of the slide. The, <coughs> since last we spoke, um, the hyperlink for um, a project called Get Nighthawk wasn't there before. It's, um, that project is trying to help bring some additional support to Envoy's um, load generator. Um, it's, uh, Nighthawk is a sub project of Envoy. It's a load generator written in C++. It helps characterize the performance of um, data service meshes of data planes that run on Envoy. And so, but it doesn't have, um, it has a single distribution in one Docker container. And so the, because of the, the interrelated work streams that happen inside of the service mesh working group, um, hopefully bringing some additional distribution to Nighthawk, helping uplift that sub project and making it more accessible will enable um, a few of the service meshes that are looking at it today uh, historically, Istio has used a load generator called Fortio um, and still does, but has been looking more toward um, Nighthawk and its use. So has um, the App Mesh team. Um, and so have maybe some others that are using Envoy in their data plane. So, anyway, that's what that project in bold is about. Um, and specifically, some, some of the individuals at Red Hat and at Google who um, work on Nighthawk are aren't in the time zone that works well for the 1 p.m. central meeting that we have. So the second update or the third update, so to speak, is on Ambassador and it being, um, it's been the, under review for some time. Um, it's gotten thumbs up from um, Matt Klein, from SID Network for uh, opening to, so it's due diligence is, it's sort of closed due diligence is completed and has passing colors. So I think it's, we're near Zion, we're all ready for open public comment on its proposal for incubation. I think, I think that's, I think that's us. I think that's SIG Network. Awesome. Is that ambassador um, due diligence document, has that been circulated around the TOC? Mm -hmm. It might have been, and I have just not noticed it <laughs> yeah. right let me let, i'll slap a link into the um no uh, i think maybe there's two questions one way of answering your question is no i don't uh, publicly i don't know that it, it it has not i think it's like we're ready for a call for public review but but sort of privately within the toc right I, i'm uh, is mr klein on right. uh matt are you there Okay, I guess if he's not, we can uh, call on him to uh, let us know if Ambassador is ready for public dissemination. Yeah, sorry, oh, sorry here. Yeah, no, I don't think the doc has been sent out to the private list, but uh, I looked at it a couple of months ago and I think it's fine to go. 
So we can send it around privately or just open the public comment period. Let's open it to public comment, why not? Okay, great. Thank you, Matt. Awesome, thank you. And thank you, Lee. Any questions for SIG Network? Okie doke, should we go back to Paris and contribute to strategy? That looks like Here. a ready, ready. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm, I'm 2021 ready. ready. Uh, I was like, Lee, I wasn't really ready. But anyway, uh, <laughs> so we actually have a lot. We, we, we came into this update going, oh, it'll just be a quick one. Uh, and then we actually started updating and we were like, oh, uh, different story. So just in some meta news for us, we are going to have some uh, incoming charter updates. Uh, the one charter update is going to be sort of a proposal of our graduation process for our docs and guidance. Now that we have this beautiful thing set up, uh, it's CNCF slash project dash template repo. We want to make sure that the TOC and the community is okay with the guidance that we're providing these individuals as well as projects. So uh, the proposed graduation is the following. It's going to go into a draft state in one of our repositories. It will have, of course, community collaboration, a call for final community collaboration. Matt and Saad uh, as TOC reps would give a final say and then ultimately take it to you as TOC members. Um, we already have some docs for review to go through that kind of a process and we'll have a email list or excuse me, mailing list. Uh, we'll have a mailing list item out by the end of today with some of those docs. Uh, for example, the contributor ladder guidances uh, included in that. I know Lee and a couple other folks have been eagerly anticipating that. So that's one of the, one of the many in there. Um, and then other charter changes that we have coming down the road are really just based off of the roadmap that we had initially set forward. Uh, and I think we have hit and achieved all of those things that we said we would. Uh, so now we're going to include 2021 and beyond. So as far as sub-project activity, uh, this is where the, the two slides was necessary because we were like, wow, we really did do a lot. Uh, for maintainer circle, guess what? We had our first one. Uh, that's awesome. It took like nine months to get that off the ground and it really ends up just being one meeting. Uh, but it was awesome nonetheless. We had 41 maintainers come from seven different unique projects. Uh, the structure uh, is the following. Uh, hello everyone, how are you? Here's the house rules. Uh, the second is Dorothy, in this case, Dorothy Howard, who uh, teaches at uh, University of San Diego and does research on FOSS. Uh, she came and did a little bit of a review of the research and the people that she talks to about her research uh, and her burnout interviews and things like that. And then we had Aaron Crickenberger, maintainer on Kubernetes, come and give a very personal story of his about his burnout uh, and some of the challenges that he had, as well as some of the things that he's done to help himself. So uh, we also had break rooms after each one. So there was a lot of introductions, a lot of camaraderie, a ton of personal stories. So that's why it was not recorded. Uh, and they will most likely not be recorded in the future because there was a ton of personal shared, which is amazing. Everybody felt very comfortable sharing, uh, sharing some of that information and it was very lovely. Uh, so future uh, sessions expect us. Uh, we will be talking to you all on the maintainer CNCF list, as well as maintainer circle on Slack. This will be at least once a month. Other future sessions coming to you are going to think are going to be things like inclusive language, uh, value and principle building for yourself as well as your project, maintaining conflict, uh, managing during grief and loss, and other really awesome things like that. So that's maintainer circle. Next slide, please. Hey Paris, a quick question on yes. the the burnout aspect of things like that. Have any of the stories slash findings been shared with the chaos project folks so that they can maybe see if there's something to be learned there community health no, but yeah i'm happy to happy to link up with whoever i have a to-do item to get a kind of like what we learned out of the session to the maintainers list so uh, i can happily like take that info to them or or whatever, Dorothy included some of her research uh, and things right. like that so i can forward that to you or whoever 
Thanks. Yeah. So governance and contributor growth are two other sub projects. Um, we started to discuss the idea of taxonomies uh, and then also building out all of the project templates and guidance, like I said, that, uh, that we've been building for governance. Taxonomies, I don't wanna hit on this too much, but I definitely think that TOC and folks will take interest in this. If anybody's read the Nadia Working in Public book, this is what uh, a part of the book, just one part uh, that it, you know, attempts to do, which is open source is so big now and there's more ways to eat a Reese's Pieces, so therefore we should probably lump this into things like contributor communities and not contributor communities and, uh, and what have you, because not everybody needs to have a contributor community to, to open source. So uh, this is a, a discussion that uh, we've been having and it's gonna hopefully turn into something. Uh, if, <laughs> if you'd like to join us for this discussion and to hopefully turn it into something, uh, potentially badging and other really cool things, uh, let us know. And then contributor growth. Uh, we've got a maintainer site that's about to pop up. Would definitely appreciate any and all contributors there to help us with that. This will be all information that is very relevant to not only new contributors and surfacing the GitHub repository that Eeyore and so many others have been steadfast and amazingly working on. So it gives some discoverability to that, but it'll also bubble up maintainer information that isn't necessarily accessible at all. So uh, that's the idea behind the site. Uh, we've also got a draft state of the recruiting playbook which will go into our larger, uh, larger contributor growth framework. Uh, but if you'd like to take a, take a peek at where we are with you know, how to recruit contributors, uh, feel free to weigh in there. Uh, and then we still have uh, the uh, thing on deck where we were gonna talk about um, community management and a contributor strategy graduation requirement. Uh, but that's just, again, that's more of a discussion right now still and on deck. But, that's pretty much it. Sorry I ate up all your time. We had a lot. So hope everybody has a good year. Wonderful. I'm just having a quick scan of the uh, proof of concept of the contributor maintainer site. There's clearly lots of good work going on in this SIG. It's amazing. Really cool. Yeah, right, thanks to everybody. Shout outs to my people. <laughs> Any questions for Paris? All right. Which SIG is next? Observability. Yes, uh, I might cut out again because my home line is having major issues the last few weeks. Also, I'm not quite certain if we covered parts of this already. Uh, of course, I kind of brain flushed over the new year, so stop me if you uh, if you heard the part of this before. Um, first is just a, a a look back of the past six months of of who um, attended. Um, and we have a central core of maybe 12 people. Um, I'm not going to read out the list of, of companies, but those are the companies who attended over this half year of, of SIG observability existing. Um, our, current in, our current in progress efforts uh, can be obviously seen in, in our GitHub. Um, we are working on, on that white paper, which we want to get out. Um, and still would like some uh, some feedback on our current design docs. We did finish the uh, due diligence document for open metrics incubation, uh, which is linked here. Um, last year, we had a call with Alina and Dave, who were both interested in sponsoring. Uh, Josh and Paris had some uh, concerns uh, that's, sorry, governance, WG, not SIG governance, but same difference, you know what I mean. Um, there were some concerns, but those have been resolved over New Year's. Um, and as you probably heard, Open Metrics has also been submitted to the IETF as, a, as an internet draft, which will then hopefully become an RFC. And I will be speaking at the next IETF conference uh, to, to try and get that forward. Upcoming ag agenda items. Um, we want to be taking a deeper look at, at stream latency in particular, when you have like your, your whole pipeline of, of determining which part of what is adding that latency, which is obviously super relevant for, for anyone with a cloud uh, offering. 
Um, we have scheduled a few meet the project things where basically projects can come and, and self introduce themselves to, um, to the SIG observability. And also we want to create a, a architecture catalog, which basically tells uh, potential users how actual end users are using observability tools in their own I'm going to guess that network issue did come back to bite Richard. I was a little worried that was just me. Yeah. I think we all we all had the same reaction. Oh god. <laughs> oh no. It was looking at other people's faces and thinking, yeah, they're also they're also not hearing anything. <laughs> did warn us that there was in fact some issues, so he did indeed. Yeah. I'm curious about the last uh, item on that page about scheduling an explainer session. I guess, shall we move on to the next one? And when Richie comes back, we can hopefully Absolutely. hear about the last three bullets. All right, I'll drop to runtime next. Hello, runtime. I think I saw Ricardo. Hey, happy New Year, everyone. Uh, Hello. Yeah, so runtime. Um, we didn't have a lot of activity in December. I think some of the folks are, were actually out. Uh, uh, but uh, yeah, we're continuing with um, projects and reaching out to uh, some of them. And we did actually have one meeting. Another one of our meetings got postponed. Uh, so on the different spaces. So we have containers and runtimes. Uh, we have this project called Sysbox. Uh, and this is like um, a project that allows you to run uh, containers, but they're in a VM-like uh, setting. Like you can run them with uh, system D and, and it looks like a VM. So they're going to be presenting on February 4th, so next month. Um, Trial is another project that we've been talking to uh, for a couple of months already, and they're still gathering some information, and the, they will be presenting sometime in the future. Um, this is a container image registry is written in Rust. So that's Trow. Then we have a few WebAssembly projects that we we reached out to. Uh, so WebAssembly is a very uh, new area and I guess exciting. So a lot of people are interested. So we, we want to uh, get uh, more engagement there. So Swarm is a WebAssembly runtime uh, written Scala. So hopefully we'll get them to present. Then Wasmer is another WebAssembly runtime. Uh, reached out to them. And then uh, finally Gasm, which is a WebAssembly in Go. So lots of stuff with WebAssembly. Uh, so on the AI ops and IoT space, uh, in our only meeting that we had, uh, in December, uh, Open Yurt presented. Uh, and this is a project that allows you to uh, extend Kubernetes to the edge and uh, is a very similar project to Cube Edge. So they're actually a, a CNCF sandbox project now. Um, so they're happy to be in the CNCF. And they mentioned that they've gotten a lot of traction from being in the CNCF. So they're pretty excited and, and hopefully uh, they're looking at, uh, you know, going maybe into the next stage in, in the project uh, life cycle. Uh, Qflow, uh, so we've been talking to them for already a couple of months and uh, they had our meetings uh, or presentation schedule in December, but they ended up postponing and they're actually presenting on the 17th on this month. 
And K3S is another project uh, at, uh, at the edge uh, or targeting Kubernetes at the edge. And we have been talking to them and they'll be presenting soon. They're already a CNCF sandbox project. So uh, exciting projects. Uh, and in the other area, we have the operating systems for uh, containers or operating systems in general. Uh, another project is Vortail, and they'll be presenting on uh, Thursday. So, uh, yeah, so this is a, a lightweight operating system that allows you to run containers. It's, it's similar to some of the projects that presented in the past, like Talos and Flatcar. And then we have REST CTL uh, project uh, from the folks at Facebook. Uh, and this allows you to control resources in an operating system using metrics like latency and errors and you know, uh, SRE type of metrics. So they'll be presenting soon. So and yeah, and that's the activity that we have for the projects. And as far as the SIG, uh, we uh, we're planning uh, to meet uh, all the chairs and maybe set up a plan for next year and to see uh, where we can get more engagement. To, uh, I mean, we've been getting a lot of these projects come in to present, but maybe we can think about some of the things that make this, this it can actually uh, increase the engagement. Um, yeah, and then we're, we're looking for some guidance from the TOC to as far as, uh, you know, where to go this next year is there's some new things that, you know, the TOC is thinking about uh, and then where the six actually can help out. Yeah, and that that's it for the updates. Uh, so any questions. Awesome. I think it's super interesting that are all these different WebAssembly runtimes. I, I'd love to know what the differences are between them all, but I mean, that's a whole separate discussion, but um, I think yeah. this work is amazing. Yeah. All right, any questions for Ricardo before we can try going back to Richie if his internet connection is holding up? I can try, but not promise. <laughs> It's it's been horrible the last two weeks or so, um, which is great with the lockdown, not having internet. Anyway, um, I've been informed that the last thing which which was open was um, TOC requests. Uh, basically, uh, Liz, uh, you wanted to have a bit of an explainer about open metrics, open telemetry, open tracing, open census, all the other opens. Um, and I just wanted to uh, to ask the group when when you would like to have that scheduled, basically. I think that would be great. Amy, can we put that onto an agenda for one of the non-SIG update meetings? Um, I don't know how our we... next one is actually available if you'd like to be able to do it on the 19th. Too soon? I mean, you have, you have to fix your internet in the meantime, Richie. Sorry. <laughs> I think we lost him again. I think we have. Okay. <laughs> God, that must be so painful. I'll take it offline with him. All right. Okay. Uh, let's move on to whoever is after SIG security. Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, quick update from us. We have 73 members now from 60 different affiliations. Um, and we wrapped up our nomination um, process to determine who we would like to nominate as additional technical leads to the two that we currently have. So um, on the slide, we've got Ash and Aradna and Andres with the breakdown just like we did last time about why we feel like they would be excellent technical leads for SIG security. So I believe we're just waiting on approval from the talk with the nominations that we have. I think, yeah, we have, I think strictly speaking, the 
process is we're supposed to have a vote. I can't remember if I actually called for that vote. Or I think not. it's open because I think I voted. Yeah, because I, I remember we were sort of unanimously happy with those. It was leads just before Christmas, them. though, so probably everyone else didn't notice it. Yes, so um, we can dig out that vote and just recirculate it to make sure everyone is happy. Yeah. Awesome, thank you. And that's all that we have currently. We're ramping back up for a great 2021. Any questions for SIG Security? Awesome, thank you, Emily. Uh, storage. Hello, everyone. Alex, um, hi. Happy, happy New Year, such as it is. <laughs> I've, I've, I've hit a special personal milestone of 300 days of not seeing anyone in person, so that's fun. <laughs> um, so anyhow, six storage. Um, so Project Longhorn, um, we need to start the DD process with um, SAD um, to move uh, the project from Sandbox to incubation. Um, it looks very strong, so it should be fairly straightforward. Um, Open EBS, we're still in some ongoing discussions uh, with the project team um, on, on some changes that are needed. Um, in terms of um, some new topics, one one of our uh, one of our members um, proposed uh, uh, disaster recovery as a as a discussion, and we've started uh, ordering a document um, which we're going to share with the group uh, at the next call, um, which is going to cover a bunch of topics. Some of them um, theoretical, some of them um, um, sort of pragmatic how tos. Uh, in terms of uh, implementing disaster recovery in, in cloud native ways um, between um, between clusters, you know, and, and talking about different replication mechanisms and failover mechanisms that are available, um, which is uh, which has proven to be um, a really interesting topic for everyone. Um, we also had uh, in our last call um, a discussion to set up a um, a set of uh, uh, I guess, community presentations to build out um, some community content. So, so this will probably um, take the form of some presentations and recorded um, sessions, which we will be sharing um, as part of a way of disseminating information, but also um, getting, a, uh, getting a bigger, creating a bigger um, uh, community in, in, in SIG storage. Um, we're still working on the performance and benchmarking my paper, although that, that kind of stalled a little bit um, over the holidays. And we've um, we've been looking to recruit um, some additional tech leads uh, with the SIG, and we have uh, two or three candidates now who are uh, very interested, and we're and we're talking them through the process. So we'll probably be looking to um, nominate those leads in the next um, in the next uh, call. And that's it for, for me. Great. I this may be a conversation we'll we'll want to take offline, but I, I do want I know there's sort of some similarities and some differences with open EBS and Longhorn. And I think this is a good question where we should be or a good example of where we need to be um I guess cognizant of what we're recommending. You know, I don't. Does it make sense to have both of those? Pro are they sufficiently different? Do they offer sufficiently diverse properties to their users that it makes sense to have two different options? I'm. I'm not saying we have to necessarily put them head to head, but I don't want to be in a situation where CNCF has 58 storage solutions that are all basically the same. <laughs> And the same would apply yeah, to any other uh, any other situation. So any other. I mean that 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 that's a, that's a fair comment. Um, I think there are some similarities. Um, it's right right now. Um, Longhorn seems to be sort of on a trajectory of of kind of sailing through the DD process, as far as we can tell. 
um, OpenEBS has has some additional challenges which which we're working through, which is um, which is probably going to slow things down. So we'll. We, I'm I'm quite happy to have that discussion if we think that that's important. Um, obviously, there are other CNCF projects where where there are some overlaps, and I think we're going to see similar sort of things in in storage too. Um, but I think the you know architecturally the the, the projects do have some uh, interesting differences. Which I think if we can articulate why different projects are suitable for different reasons in different environments, it totally makes sense to have multiple. But uh, I think it's something we've worried about before the proliferation of the the landscape. Um, Agreed. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any other questions and thoughts for six storage? Okay. Is that all the six? Yes, indeed. Great. Um, we flew through that. Um, anyone got any other questions or points they would like to bring up today? I'm shocked by Alex's 300 days. It's really sad. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean to say it as a sad thing, just as a notable milestone. <laughs> One last note, Chris has put some notes into chat about the uh, upcoming TOC elections. Um, feel free to reach out if you've got questions, but these come from both the GB and the end users this time around. Oh, that is a great point. So there's what, just under a week to get nominations in? It's like Monday next week. Yeah. All right. And if anyone has questions about, you know, the role of being on the TOC, feel free to reach out to me or I'm going to assume anybody else on the TOC would also be happy to add colour there as well. Okay. I think we can go and get on with our 2021s. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Thank bye bye. You. See everyone. Bye. Bye, Bye all. Bye, everyone. I'm back for now.